Welcome to Transmission Podcast. I'm your host, Cecilia Lynn Jacobs. For the next little while, we invite you to speculate on the possibility of life on Proxima b, the closest known planet outside of our solar system that has the potential to support life. In each episode, we question what would happen if we suddenly knew we were no longer alone in the universe, and what that would mean for humanity to become an interstellar civilization. Please, stay close. for joining us for a special promotional episode of Transmission Podcast. We join you now, just days from the launch of the SANA from Coalition Headquarters in Edinburgh. Up until now, everything we have discussed has centered around the scientific, political, and religious implications of the translations and this mission. But now, as the Coalition takes the last steps in launching the SANA mission to Lux Terra, it's time to celebrate. For all of us to pause and look at what we have already done to make this happen. This is the biggest collaboration of the human race to date. It incorporates the expertise of technicians and engineers across the planet, and even off-planet. Though the Coalition and the Santa crew still face many obstacles post-launch, the mission is happening, and we should stop and enjoy everything that means. So, what's it like to plan the party of the century? We spoke to M. Piro, producer of the Santa launch party, to find out. Hi there, Em. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing quite well. So will you tell our listeners a little bit about who you are and what you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. My name is Em Piro. I am the lead organizer producer for the launch party celebrating the departure of the Senna on its way to Proxima B. And so how did you get involved in, in creating this launch this launch party? This is a mm-hmm. huge deal. Mm-hmm. Um, So I have been um, an event producer for a number of years. Um, My background is in theater and performance. Um, So for about the past 10 or so years, I've been doing independent projects in developing communities in the United States, um, Rust Belt cities, mid-sized cities, and am switching gears professionally. And kind of through you know, person A, person B, person C, I got looped into the mission and um, was brought in specifically to focus on this single event um, that is meant to kind of bring together, excuse me, to bring together many of the arms and tendrils um, that have been at play in this project for a number of years. That's really wonderful. So um, yeah, what organization brought you into this mission? Um, As I was... I'll say kind of reconfiguring um, the the path through which my work was going to continue. I came across um, the Paris Trust and Paris Foundation, um, and I've been following this project for years. So if there was any way for me to be involved or take part in this this work or contribute my background and skills to this this vision for something greater, um, I, I was going to partake in any way that I could. So even though my background tends to be pretty varied, um, I've mentioned that I've done event producing. Um, I'm also a practicing artist. Um, this, you know, kind of bringing my, both my ideas and my experience with producing and administrative prowess, one might say, in addition to my values of connectivity and of community building and of, you know, kind of looking forward and looking beyond and looking outward um, were things that seemed to synchronize re- really beautifully with the, the needs of this project. So, and what have you learned applying these theater skills, or these art making skills to these, this scientific endeavor? Mm, that's a that's a great question. Um, for me, working in art is about looking inside and outside of people, and and finding methods and finding ways to materialize things that are inarticulable 
Um, it's and because I work particularly in kinetic arts, um, and I work in body, and I work in space. Um, it's about things that go beyond the literal, um, and things that go that go beyond the reductive and the measurable. Um, and so, a project like this is about, you know, this this whole project and venture has been such a remarkable endeavor of collaboration and has brought together so many different forces from so many different corners of the world, um, from so many different ideologies, from so many different, you know, places of humanity. And the opportunity to coalesce those into this, this single celebration of human achievement is incredible. Um, I, these are things that I have imagined I don't know that I could have imagined them manifesting in the way that they have. Of course, there's been ups and downs. There always are. And of course, there's hiccups. And of course, there's problem solving. But that's why you have a team. That's why you have a team. You work through those those hiccups and those glitches along the way. I think there's been, through this venture, there's been a remarkable level of perspective that has been found through their participants and the way that that art, that science, that foundations, that religions um, have come together in a way that they they seek that enmeshed ground that that they all value and that drives them all towards a future um, rather than focusing on differences. Um, so the biggest question and challenge for me has been, how do you then create a physical space? It's one thing to talk through all those things. It's one thing to have meetings about all those things. But how do you create a physical space that invites and celebrates and elevates all these different minds, backgrounds, and humans? Um, which is which is an incredible challenge because, as we know, bringing people together in a concentrated space can can go well and it can go bad. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, so, what yeah. kind of um... What kind of spaces have you been investigating in preparation for bringing together all of these different elements of, of the arts and sciences? Yes. So my primary background has been in festival making um, and festival making specifically as a means of community building and of addressing issues of fragmentation, um, of finding ways that you have events that that resonate far beyond the happening itself. Um, and an event like this kind of fits perfectly within that that background. Do you use specific uh, like space relations or mm -hmm. um, do you how do you prepare guests? I mean everybody who's coming to this event has a certain expectation of what's going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. We're here to celebrate this vast human achievement. Um, how do you field people's expectations with the I think desired outcome of the project? Mm -hmm. I think, first of all, it's so important to focus on, you know, the opportunity to celebrate achievement is imperative for human beings, I think. Um, projects like this have been the culmination of incredible amounts of resources that have been invested, um, material resources, personal resources, people's hopes, um, people's energy. And, you know, I think celebratory events almost provide a fuel where people have been draining themselves. So finding a space, finding, you know, a place like Edinburgh that has had, has set a precedent for collectivity and community and celebration of the human spirit, that itself, that geography and topography is embedded with, you know, a precedent for that. You know, the festivals are, are not just about one thing. Edinburgh is never just about one thing. It's about many, many different things, many different ideas, many different ways of thinking and, and being and navigating the world. Um, so finding, you know, kind of like a little physical oasis within the frenzy that is the Edinburgh festivals uh, to channel all of the things that those people are doing and saying and thinking at this time and in this place is, you know, as, as long as you set the foundation and set the groundwork and set the bricks and mortar and the stone, I think um, people are, are so buzzing with that energy and want to come together and celebrate. So the trick of events like this is is finding the infrastructure that invites everybody into the room, that invites everybody to the table, and that lets the best of everybody, you know, just kind of spill out. Um, and it happens through it happens through having just places for people to connect and collide. You know, having 
you know, little things like having places for people to sit, places for people to dance, um, music that, 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 you know, kind of channels through people and that brings people together, um, places for people to have solace and quiet, places for people to just let their energy out and explode. So you're saying, you're saying that the physical arrangement of the space makes a difference in how people are able to express their celebration. You know, in my work, I'm always thinking about traversals of space, whether it's a project that I'm designing um, that involves multiple sites and venues throughout a city or whether it's a project that happens in one room in one night. Um, those opportunities for for uh, collisions between people are the same and those opportunities to bring people together that that just need a little bit of like science and methodology behind them. Um, can make can make all the difference when it comes to allowing for cultural collisions in the best possible way. So we've heard a lot about um, arranging spaces to make them uh, friendly for different types of human activity. Um, I know that uh, on this podcast we've talked a lot with social scientists about how one would um, how one would create a structure that uh, that is conducive to different kinds of activities and creating the best possible human culture. Um, do you see that relating to your work and how you're building this event? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I believe that the questions we ask about space are the same questions that we ask about equity. And, and space use and space access implies and carries with it so much weight about how we think about the people who use that space, how we grant access to that space, how we allow that space to be used. Um, and when we make decisions that can either censor, separate, or bring together or elevate all of those have residual implications for the people that are using that space. Um, I'm coming purely from kind of cultural design and cultural expression in urban spaces. I, I'm not as adept to kind of the social science and psychological ideas. Mine are more about like urban space use ideas. Um, I hope that <laughs> we're finding a lot of overlap there because um, we found it to be effective in, in, in the use of urban space and the design of urban space. That anytime you have moments to celebrate, elevate, and lift the integral aspects of a person, you know, people, people blossom and people rise to the occasion. And whenever you, you know, censor, separate, or divide, um, conflict will arise. Now, sometimes conflict can be productive I don't want to be like, you know, overly utopian in the way that I'm talking about space use. Um, but I think that there's there's a constant process of, of adaptation and change and awareness of not only who we are as the, like, these individual fleshy beings, but how we navigate space and how we how we interact with each other and, and the kind of symbolic space that we create with one another, as well as, you know, the material space that we surround ourselves with or that we construct around ourselves to facilitate that to happen. So you're saying that you're constructing a space to allow for people to be their best selves, but that is like, that is an enormous ask from uh, designing a space for a party to happen. It is. <laughs> uh, how, how, how do you get from party to people bringing their best selves by the arrangement of chairs? Yeah. Well, first of all, it's not only the arrangement of chairs. It's it's what the room offers and what the room invites. Um, I think it's imperative at, at any kind of event that's looking into culture and looking into people, you know, theater parties, um, whatever it is, that it's it's inviting people to to kind of turn themselves inside out, to bring their ideas to the forefront. I mean, you know, at, at a great party, hopefully at a great party, there's a mix of things that happen. There's amazing conversations that are had. There's relationships that are deepened. There's new acquaintances that are made. And there's physical release. 
you know, there's dancing, there's sound, there's um, new ideas that are introduced, whether it's through conversation or whether it's through something at the event. So, you know, things that I'm thinking about this event at this event are making sure that the context of everything that has gone into this project is present and that there's opportunities to encounter and interact with the many, many, many different facets that have gone into Senna. It gives me such joy.